My name is Christina and I am known as the Cup Ninja. I have been making tumblers, um, I think about four years now. Um, I recently posted a photo in Mr. Nola's Glitter of a charcuterie board. I believe that's how you say that word. A charcuterie board that I made and um, got some requests for a tutorial. So I'm going to try to walk you through that process as best I can. I am not um, a normal YouTube person or a normal um, t tutorial person because I, I kind of craft messy. So you're going to have to bear with me and um, I will do the best I can to help you understand how the process works and so that you can make your own projects. If you have any questions, please feel free to tag me and um, I will be happy to answer anything that um, you want to know. First things first, I'm going to walk you through some of the things that you will need to be able to make your own charcuterie board. First, of course, you need a board. Um, so this is the one that we're going to be working on today. I got this at a store called At Home and it was $15. I suggest going to resale stores like um, At Home, TJ Maxx, those kind of things and get your boards because they are way cheaper than actually buying them on uh, like Amazon or Walmart or anything like that. So you'll need a board. Um, there, don't don't limit yourself to just that shape. Like you can use ones like this. Um, there are uh, this kind that I found. Um, things like this with the metal handle on them, you just take the handle off. And then um, epoxy is very easy to drill a hole through. So um, once you get done with the board, you'll just mark where your holes go and then put that handle back on. Um, I did make one like that previously. So um, you will also need, um, this is kind of optional, but these are um, fire glass. They're actually the glass that goes in fire pits. I got these at... I believe it was Lowe's or Home Depot, one or the other. Um, and it was like $30 for a 10 pound bag. And it was, I mean, it's a huge bag. Like you're never going to use all of them kind of situation, but, um, these kind of make it for me, but you know, some people don't like them. So it's really an optional thing. If you like it, great. If you don't, that's fine too. Um, <clears throat> of course you're going to need epoxy, um, and that whatever brand you want to use is fine. You're going to need a couple of glitters. Um, so these are the ones I'm going to use today. Okay. So um, this is, I think it's Jothi, J-O-T-H-I from MMG. This is one, I don't know if you're going to be able to get a hold to this one, but maybe you can find something similar. This is the Bowen Blue um, that comes when you buy a Bowen tumbler. It's an MMG glitter, but you only get it if you buy a, a sorry, an, a Bowen um, turner, not tumbler. Um, so when you buy their turners, they give you this glitter for free. Um, and this one is one of my favorites. It's Oyster Fest. Um, and it is a chunky mix. And I would suggest getting a couple different cuts, a chunky, chunky mix. This one's a little bit smaller. And then this one's very fine. And this is a pearlescent. I don't know if you can see that. I'm trying to work upside down here. So, um, hopefully that works for you. I also have some, uh, white pinata ink. Um, of course, through Mr. Nola's. Now you can use whatever color um, mica powders you want, but I am going with Arteza. And these are the ones that I'm going to use, and I'll tell you the names of them. This one is Pearl White, um, Ice Blue, Copper, and Chocolate Brown. Um, I'm also probably going to use, I have all this stuff out, but I may not use it all. I may use it all. It just depends on the moment. Um, Alumalite pearlescent powder, gold metallic powder from Alumalite. And I have a couple different sizes, like this uh, for mixing epoxy, this size for mixing epoxy, and these for dividing out the epoxy. So it's really, um, oh, and you're going to need like whatever sticks or um, uh, whatever you use to actually stir your epoxy, you're going to need that. Of course, gloves and some uh, baby wipes. Okay, so I'm going to kind of get my stuff prepared and then um, 
we'll get started. Okay, so yep. given your board, and it, it really depends on what type of board you buy, some of them come with a finish on them, some of them come just raw wood. So if you have a finish on yours, you need to start sanding down with a sanding block or um, you can use um, a sander. That's what I use personally because ain't nobody got time for that, especially me. So you're just going to break that finish and you can either sand one side or you can sand the whole board. I prefer to sand the whole board. That way, once you finish, it has a uniform look. Um, you're going to go back and you're going to put um, some oil on it to make it look uniformed all over. So you don't have to completely sand it down, but you need to break that finish off of it so that um, your epoxy will stick. So then I'm just going to take paper towel, coffee filter, whatever you prefer, and wet it down just a little bit. And then I'm going to just wipe all that sanding off of there. Now I've sanded this a little bit before um, I got on camera. so. Um, you're going to need to sand a little bit more than I just demonstrated, but you don't need to sand a ton. Okay. I would not at this point um, wet my entire board, like wash it down. Definitely just use alcohol because what's going to happen is your board's going to get moisture in it. And then when you epoxy, the board will have moisture in it. It'll get sealed in there and it will not end well. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna figure out which side I want to um, be the top. So this one actually has like a little logo down here. So I want this to be the bottom of the board. So I'm gonna take my masking tape and I'm gonna mask off the bottom. Now, I want you to be very careful when you mask it off um, and just mask off up to the edge and not over. So you don't want if you can see, it's right along the edge. This is the front of it. You can't see the tape. So you don't want the tape coming over the edge right here. You want it to be able to drip down, like the epoxy to drip down your board, but you don't want it all over the back of the board. Now, if you do get it on the back of the board, don't freak out because we can fix that. But um, we don't want to um, have like a lip there, if that makes sense. So that we cannot fix. So. I'm just going to masking tape this off. So if it's not perfect, it's okay. Let's get it covered. And I overlap the tape. Just, um, can you see, hopefully you can see this. Let me put you down a little bit. I overlap the tape about an inch here. I'm going to go across here, and I'm going to overlap, and then I'm going to come up and do my handle. And you can do it all at once, but I kind of tend to do my handle just a little bit separate so that the tape is a little bit more manageable. So then I'm going to take my X-Acto knife, and all around the edges where you still see tape, I'm going to trim it. So I'm going to do that, and I'll be back.
So this, you have a hole here. So you wanna make sure you poke your X-Acto knife down in there. I just poke it down in there and then follow the shape of the, the circle. Turn it over and just kind of do the same thing. Make sure that I have that circle outlined. Make sure all the tape is out of there. It's okay to have a little bit less covered um, than to have tape down in the hole, if that makes sense. So I'm just kind of taking my X-Acto knife around the circle to get rid of the tape that's down in the hole. Okay. All right. Now, make sure that along the edges and things like that, that your tape is not sticking over. And masking tape is like the devil, I swear. It just sticks everywhere. Um, kind of like vinyl, but it is what it is. So... I'm just taking this and lifting it up along the edges. You don't have to necessarily cut it, but you don't want it wrapped around the edge of the board. And I'm pulling it up. See how I'm just kind of rolling the edges? This is a preference of mine. I like, I like my epoxy to drip down the edges. I don't want it to, but I don't want it to pull there if that makes sense. So I'm just gonna kind of, without cutting my finger off, cutting away from myself there. Okay, so you can see that it's all along the edge, but not over the edge. And it does. this does not have to be perfect. You just do the best you can. See this little piece that's sticking over the edge right here? We wanna make sure we take that off. because we don't want it in the way. Because if you have a lip, so say this is your tape that's sticking out, what's gonna happen is the epoxy is gonna pull right here and that's not what you want. You'll have a mess and you don't wanna have to do that. I, it's better to have like not enough tape on the back and then you can sand that part down than to have um, too much tape. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to turn it. I prop mine up on cups. I'm sorry, I've skipped that step. I prop mine up on cups just so when it wants to run off, it has somewhere to run off to. I, I, I'm not messing with the this end down here. So I'm only going to be messing with this end down here because it's a charcuterie board. So you want place to put food, but you don't want, I mean, you want So I have mixed parts A and B, and I am using Illumilite um, with the UV protection. I just had some of this the other day because I was doing an experiment, so I'm using the rest of it. And <clears throat> however you normally mix your epoxy, I would go ahead and mix it that way. I um, am not a gentle epoxy mixer. I kind of just get, do what I got to do to get it mixed up, and then I do what I got to do to get the air bubbles out. So um, it is really a preference um, for you, like what you usually do. Sorry, I had something, I had a piece of tape in my epoxy. Um, so however you normally do it, that's what I would do. And um, so if this is the, your first time doing it, I know you're gonna ask me how much to mix. I don't know in particular. Um, I usually just mix up to about right here on my cup. Um, of course, parts A and B, and then I pour it into this larger container. Um, this particular epoxy has a 30 to 40 minute work time, so it's very important that you know um, what your work time is with your epoxy. So if your work time on your epoxy is only 15 minutes, because it gets hard faster, then you're only gonna wanna mix just a little bit at a time so that you have time to work with it. Um, you don't wanna getting hard um, and going to waste because you, you're not ready for it yet. So I'm just going to mix, 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 mix um, until I think it's all mixed up. Now, I have a tendency to um, prefer warm epoxy. It's just me. 
Um, so I have a little heat gun, um, and it's not it's not a heat gun, it's a heat tool, I guess is what you wanna call it, and there is a difference. Um, if you get a heat gun, it's gonna cause all of your epoxy to be runny because it's so hot and so intense. It, it thins out the epoxy and it's gonna all run off the board. So if, you're, if you've done this before and your epoxy ran off the board, that's probably what you did. So I'm just going to warm it up just a little bit. I'm just kind of warming it up in the cup. And this is the lowest setting. So I'm just warming it up, just a little bit. Stirring it around. This should not be hot enough to melt your cup. Um, so that's key. So I'm just gonna, I warmed it up a little bit and then I'm gonna stir it a little bit more. And you can see it kind of thinned it out. You know, it's thin enough for me to work with now without, um, without clumping up on me or being so thick I can't get everything stirred up. Okay, so now I'm gonna get my gloves <clears throat> and put them on. I'm sorry if, if this is kind of redundant for most of you, but um, I'm, I'm trying to be as thorough as I can without um, being crazy. And that glove just split, so um, I'll just use one glove. Okay, so I'm gonna take my little cups and I'm gonna divide my epoxy out um, into smaller sections. So I'm trying to figure out the best way to do this. Let me slide this this way just a little bit and I'll show you what I'm doing. I'm going to put about half a cup's worth into here. Um, and now I'm going to, I particularly want to lay my fire glass first, just because that's the way I prefer to do it. Um, and that is a personal preference. Just, I want to have my pattern down before I get started on everything else. So I'm going to take my copper and I usually put about that much and a half so i put enough to cover this and then a half of that um, in there so i'll show you this this is about how much i always tend to put too much mica powder and um, mica powder in there i is it maca or mica i don't know anyways um i always tend to put too much and i try to i try to scale myself back <laughs> but i i don't know why i always do so I'm just mixing it a little bit. Now, mind you, my other epoxy is still sitting over here. I haven't moved it, touched it, or done anything with it. Um, so I want to kind of go this way with it. And this is something that you have to work out in your head what you want to do ahead of time. I know I want to go this way with it. So I'm going to take my epoxy and drip it down the side and then go this way with it. So I'm, I got my basic shape, and let me see if I can turn this all the way down so you can see. So it is literally dripping down the side over here, because that's what I want it to do. Run it down the side, and then run it across where you want it. And this one needs to be kind of wide, because this is what you're going to lay your glass on. Again, it's dripping down the side over here as well. And if you drop it here, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Get your glass. If you have this kind of glass, um, pay attention because there's two sides to it. One side is reflective and one side is not. You do not want the reflective side up. So I'm just going to lay my glass in here the best way I can. Now, you see that these have little sharp edges. You don't want that close to the edge of your board, right? So, you don't want it to of course poke anyone it will tend to slide so you have to bring it back it's sliding with the epoxy so if the epoxy is running um, just make sure you chase it down and there's no random I mean there's no set pattern it's just random I'm putting whatever I want to put on wherever I want to put it on and then I tend to put the larger pieces on and then go back and put the smaller pieces. So large piece and then small piece toward the end. Now if I want to 
come and add some a little bit more into the corners. I just make sure that's not a sharp piece. And make sure, oops, see that one's upside down? So just take it off, and get rid of it. Don't try to put it back on there, it's not worth it. It's one little piece, it'll be fine. If you put one reflective side up and then try to put the rest like this, it will be noticeable. So pay attention to what you're doing. And this is laid in here just like this. And I just do my best to fit them in there. Um, if you kind of shove them all together, they will fit pretty well. They tend to form a little pattern on their own. And then, there we go. Probably can fit one more right here, a little one. And when you get it like you like it, don't mess with it anymore. Don't, don't do like I do and have a tendency to mess with it too much. Okay, so now we're going to start with just the rest of our epoxy and mica powders, mica powders, whatever you want to call them. I, I think I have a tendency to call them mica powders because I had a dog named Mika who recently passed away. So forgive me if, if you don't think that's the correct way to pronounce it. Okay, so I have my blue. I hope that you guys can, let me see if I can scoot scoot this over here so you can see it that much and just a little bit more and then I lay that down my pearl white that much and just a little bit more and then my um, chocolate brown now um, don't get rid of these because you never know what's going to happen. Like you may need a little bit more, you may need a little bit less. We don't know. Um, this is not an exact science. There is no exact measurements. This is how I cooked as well. So you just kind of go with it. So I'm mixing it up. And then I just start adding it wherever I want it. Okay, and you have to determine how far you want it to go, um, how far out this way you want it to go. You do want to make sure that you get your handle covered in a way that you find natural. Um, I have a tendency to want to go all the same direction, so I try to change that up a little bit. Um, it doesn't matter because, you, as you know, epoxy moves. So I'm just throwing this on there. I don't. Ha I didn't use it all. I just kind of set it to the side. And I'm gonna stir my white up. Again, just go with it. So you just don't want to cover the rocks that you just laid on there. Um, you want to kind of keep those uncovered. I guess is what the um, clean? I don't know. So I put that to the side and then I'm going to add my blue. Make sure you're doing this in a well ventilated area. I mean, you know all the safety tips. Just dump it on there. Like I said, no exact science. You just want to make sure that if you're coming along the edge, you can help it a little bit here. Help it go down the edge. Help it go down the edge here. It's really your preference how you wanna, um, how you want it to look. Um, just don't, I suggest not, not trying to plan it. Just let it happen because the minute you try to plan it, it's not gonna work out like that. Okay, so 
now we'll add a little bit of our um, clear. What you want to do is create a barrier right here. So if we've decided right here is as far as we want to go, right? So I want to create a straight line here that goes down both sides and that kind of creates a barrier. This is where the epoxy is going to stop. We don't want it to go any further than that. Um, Now, I'm going to add, maybe it's a little bit more than that. Can you, I don't even know if you guys can see that. Um, probably half of what you added of the other one. And then some alcohol, um, pinata drops, pinata drops, whatever. But whatever, that's what Rachel says, but whatever. Okay. Just be careful when you're adding white because white has a tendency to take over um, anything you're doing. I mean, add it. You can always, always, always add more, but can't really take it away. So you just want to save a little bit of it um, for later and I'll, you'll see why in a little bit. Okay, so now I'm going to get my glitter. Again, still working with the same epoxy we mixed originally. And then I'm going to just dump this. I don't, I'm not sure if you can see me. I'm just filling the same amount in each cup. Two, three. And don't be afraid um, to use that epoxy and, and get more. It's fine if you need to get more. Nothing, I mean, nothing says that you have to know exactly how much epoxy you're going to need to start with. Um, if you spill things like I just did, um, you can always come back and... I have parchment paper down, so you can always come back and scoop it up and use it again if you need to. Um, when you're when you're mixing epoxy with glitter, whatever amount of epoxy you have there, just try to cover it, the top of it, fully, and then mix it up. And then if you need to add more, that's great. Add more. If you think that that's enough, then um, that's fine too. So I'm just adding this in. I will tell you that trying to drip glitter down the side um, doesn't really turn out like you think it will. So try to keep it toward the middle and the, the um, centers of your of your mixture here so that you can um, keep the, the sides pretty covered with mica powder and things like that. So I'm doing the same thing to the blue. Just put a little bit of glitter on top and then mix it in. It's always better to have um, not enough and then have to add more glitter than to have wasted your glitter um, and made your epoxy too thick with glitter. Now, none of these little cups, I'm not throwing any of them away. I'm just kind of setting them to the side because you never know what we're going to have to add more of and what we're not going to have to add more of. Um, so I'm just going through. Again, just enough to cover the top. There is no exact science to this. I'm just dumping it wherever I think I want to dump it. I try to look at like where two colors are touching. So if there's like copper and um, white touching and, and lay that glitter in between there. I hope that makes sense to someone. So then I'm going to take some more copper and just kind of 
douse that in there. Um, this I actually um, spilled on the table. I don't know if you guys can see that. Hopefully you can't because, you know, we don't need to advertise that we make mistakes, right? Mistakes are going to happen. This is craft, um, crafts. So mistakes happen. You just have to know how to work with them and not let them work you. So I'm just going back, adding some more, adding some more of all the leftover things I had over there. Okay. And some chocolate brown. All right. So you can see that it's mainly covered and um, don't think that this is how it's going to look because it's not. You just want to um, get it all down and then you can move it around. Now, this little clear area that we put here, we were going to go right on the other side of that and we're going to draw a white line. If you've made... Um, any beach looking tumblers, things like that, you know what I'm doing. I'm just, just kind of creating a barrier, but making it look like it was meant to be there. And I am scraping the bottom of the cup. Okay, so, wipe my other hand off here. Here is where your little um, heat tool comes in handy. You don't want a heat gun, again, because you're going to make all the epoxy run off. But you're just going to loosen it up a little bit, and I'm going to turn it on, and then you're just going to kind of watch because the epoxy will kind of move around with the heat. I'm making sure we pop all the bubbles, of course. So as it moves around, it's going to run down the edge a little bit. We want to make sure that we're kind of helping it along. Make sure our edges get covered. If you have a spot that doesn't want to take any epoxy, like right here, doesn't want to take the epoxy, I just picked up some off the table and run it on, along the edge and it doesn't really matter because it's going to run off anyway but for some reason it just has a tendency to not want to take that epoxy there and on this side it doesn't look fully covered right here so we're going to scoop some up and put it on there So now it's thoroughly dripping off the side. I think this right here needs some more contrast, personally. So I am going to um, mix just a little bit more white into my, the rest of my clear epoxy. I'm going to make sure my hands are clean because what you don't want to do is grab this end of the board with epoxy all over your hands. And then I'm just going to kind of lift it up and let it run one way. 
and then take it the other way. And again, this is you, all you, however you like it, however you want it. Okay, so I like it and everything. I just think it needs a little bit more glitter. So I'm going to mix some more epoxy. I'm going to add some more glitter. And this is the process that where it's all you, like however you want it. Um, it's going to be a, a you thing, not a me thing, not anybody else thing. You just determine however you like it. So I'm going to, I'm going to come back in a second with some more epoxy mixed up. Okay, here we are. We have our epoxy remixed and then I've just put it back into the same containers because it, I mean, why waste more containers? So I'm going to add more glitter to each one, just like we did before. Now, I know it seems like um, we're using a lot of epoxy, but keep in mind, probably 50% of this is running off onto the parchment paper. And that's what we want it to do because we want it to make that pattern, you know, that um, beachy, water looking, um, watercolor looking um, mixture um, to make it look like it, <clears throat> like it was dripped on there. Um, in a, in, in a more natural way than not what we're actually doing, which is kind of just dumping it on there and let it flow everywhere. Um, so I'm just mixing up my glitter, putting my little stick over here so that I can still use it. Um, I, I really set out to be a, a not so messy crafter, but it just doesn't work. Like some people just aren't meant to be clean crafters. Those of you who have like super clean workspaces and all of that, I, I envy you. I just can't do it like I have to. My brain doesn't work like that. Okay, so I'm going to use, this time, I'm going to use some of this um, pearlescent powder by Illumilite. Now, I will tell you that I bought this pearlescent powder probably two years ago and still have powder left in it. Um, and I use it all the time because it's really potent. Um and it looks good and it doesn't take a lot I will tell you that um, I'm also going to use some of the gold um, just for some contrast and if you look at this it's like super um, gold <laughs> for lack of a better wrote better word super metallic -y and um, again potent you only need a little bit now I will tell you uh, when we get to the gold, there is a, a thing. I would use the gold last. And I'll show you why in just a second. So I'm just going to drip more um, of the epoxy. This is the pearlescent powder. And you can see that it's very pearlescent. Like it does its job. And this, this time I'm just going to go all in the same direction. And I don't know that it matters so much. But... In my mind it does <laughs> I just want it to go all right here and we're gonna go straight across the board right here because the end of this is covered in epoxy but it's covered in glitter epoxy and I can see the wood through it again if that's what you like that's what you like and that's what you should do that's not what I like though um, in particular okay so I'm just gonna Keep going with it. Making sure I hit the sides. You don't want too much of one, too much less, less of the other. It, it's just a, like I said, it's a you thing. Now I know what you're thinking. Now you can't see the brown, but once we start to heat it up and move it around. You'll be able to see that again. I, for one, thought it had too much brown. But again, personal preference. Keeping that glitter toward the middle. I love this glitter. It is my favorite. Okay. So again, I'm going to heat it, hit it with a heat gun. Oh, 
popping those air bubbles. You can almost see them pop, which is very satisfying. I'm not heating it up too much. Again, we're going to lift and let it run. Okay, so that's more of the look I was going for. A little bit of copper, a lot of blue, those kind of things. I do want to add the gold in there. So when you're mixing this, see how it, it kind of smokes a little bit? But this one has a tendency, because it's so potent, has a tendency to sit on top of whatever you're doing. So just be careful that you're laying it wherever you want it effectively. So, I got that on there. I like that. Let's throw some, still have some glitter inside here. There is no right or wrong process to this. It is whatever you like. And whatever matches whatever you want to do. So if you want it to match someone's kitchen, those kind of things. Again, a little bit more heat. I'm just going to try to move that gold just a little bit. Going along the edge. I'm hoping you can see. See right here how it's sitting on top that's what I was talking about when I said it likes to sit on top so I'm just gonna put something up there to break it up because that's what it needs to have done is something to break it up um, I have some white over here just a little bit put some of this blue And don't be afraid if you need to. There's, I mean, there's plenty of epoxy underneath your board. Put it there, use it, do whatever you got to do with it. I have some copper left over here that I'm going to take and run through just a little bit. Now, just like a cup on a turner, this is going to change as it dries. So just make sure that you get what you like. Okay, so I am going to move this across the room so I can show you how to finish the board. You're constantly keeping those rocks together. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, so here we are. Um, I've got everything just about cleaned up. Now, I'm going to take just some clear epoxy. And right where your rocks are, we're going to make sure we have them where we want them. And in the shape we want them, you, you can move these around until the point of the epoxy starts to set. What you don't want is sharp edges sticking out. So we're just going to take and drizzle. Don't pour, drizzle um, some clear epoxy all over the rocks. Now this epoxy has been sitting here for about five minutes, so it's got some um, thickness to it. I'm just drizzling it on there so that we can try to cover some of the sharp edges that are on the rocks um, without affecting our design around it. And just drizzling it on there. Not too much at a time, just enough. Now, 
I'm going to step back and see, do, is there anything else I want to add? Um, I think I have just a little bit of epoxy left over. I think I could probably get away with some blue, some more blue in this. So I'm opening up my box. And then I'm just going to pick which one I like. Um, I guess I'll go back with my ice blue. There's just um, a little bit too much brown in there for my taste. So I've just dumped some blue into my epoxy. Mixing it up. Sorry if you hear my husband yelling, the football game's on. And I'm just throwing some more blue in there. Yeah, see that helps a little bit better. I think. Um, and again, this is a preference, however you like it. But you can actually see that there is literally no rhyme or reason to this. I am just dumping it on there. And there's a little bit of white left, so I'm going to use that. Okay, so right here you can see um, how that white got on there. If you just take your little into your um, wooden spoon, wooden stick, rub it across there, it will disappear. Okay, so I'm going to go and set this across the room and then um, clean this area up and then I will show you how to finish your board. So for the sake of time, I have another board that I've been working on, um, and I will kind of show you how to finish from here. This is one that I've already finished. The epoxy is dry on it. You can see that this has been sanded down pretty thoroughly. This is the way yours should look, um, just so that you have um, all of your finish be uniform, front and back. So I've already started peeling half the tape off, but I want you to kind of see what you're supposed to do. So I'm going to turn you down, turn you down, and then I'm going to take my heat gun, heat tool, sorry, um, and I have, hold on one second, I have some epoxy on it, so I want to make sure I get it cleaned off, because I don't want it to stay on there. Okay, so I'm going to take my heat tool. And I'm just going to kind of lift the edges of the tape. If you don't use a heat tool on this, it will make it more difficult to get the tape off. So I just start heating wherever I feel like is a good area and just start pulling. And it will come off. Um, it may take a little patience, but it will come off. I get an exacto knife, get up under that tape, and it will start to come off. Now, don't worry about all of this along the edge. We'll fix that. As you can see, the warmer it gets, the more it loosens up. And again, this is not a heat gun, it's a heat tool. Um, and the difference is just the amount of heat that it puts out. Um, it's not going to roast your board, um, or your fingers for that matter. So I'm just following it around, letting the heat gun do the work not myself um, don't stab yourself with the exacto knife like I've done a billion zillion times 
So the main thing you want to make sure that you're doing is getting the tape off of all of the edges. If it's buried under epoxy, don't worry about it. It's going to be fine. Because you're going to be able to sand that off. Alright, so that was a large little pile of epoxy there. That's what took so long to get that off. cut this off so you get the gist of how to get the tape off once all the tape is off now right here you can see that there's like a pile of epoxy um, with tape embedded in it I would not even worry about that when um, you get completely done get yourself a sander sand all of this right here with 80 grit sandpaper so I can't do that obviously for camera purposes, but you're going to sand all of this with 80 grit sandpaper and it will make like a flat edge just like your board has right here. Um, once you get the whole thing sanded down and I would sand all of the, all of the board, then flip it over and I would sand like right up to the edge of right here, just because sometimes you see right here, this is where I grabbed it with epoxy on my fingers. So once you get all of that sanded down, you're going to take um, you can either use cutting board oil. Hold on, I'll turn this like this so you can see me. Okay, sorry about that. I'm just talking with my hands, I guess. All right. I'm sorry if that made any of you feel wheezy. Um, so you can either use cutting board oil or you can use tongue oil or um, some people use avocado oil. It really depends on your preference for your board. And then just saturate the board pretty well with that let it dry um, about, I say about 12 hours, let it soak in and then do it again. Repeat the process for about 12 hours. Now, once that's done, your board is set. You can um, use it as you need to uh, feel fit. I, when I gave these as gifts for Christmas, told people this is a presentation board. It's not a cutting board, so don't cut on it. Um, you just wanna warn people of that. So don't cut on it, but definitely feel free to present your food on it hand wash only um you know everything that you would say with the tumbler you would tell them that print your card uh, you know your little care cards or whatever you want to do with it um i just gave it to family for presents so i let them know that, hey you know it's not a cutting board don't cut on it now if you guys have any questions f please please feel free to um comment um and tag me in it so that I'm watching for it and I know that you're directing a, a question to me. Um, I um, am happy to answer any questions you have and I hope that this was helpful for you guys. Um, like I said, I I'm, it's probably not, not the most professional tutorial you've ever seen, but I hope it helps. All right, have a blessed day. Happy New Year um, and God bless. Bye.